Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In the Spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made these interactive elements inside this yoga studio scene I created in Spline. First, I'm going to show you right here how the woman is slowly following your cursor. So when you start to move your cursor down here, you can see that she's going to follow it all the way around. I'm also going to show you how you can click on an element like the yoga mat down here and change the color from red to purple. I'll also show you how you can hover over an object like the ball and have it animate down the scene. And if you watch the water bottle right here, what I'm gonna do is hold down the right arrow key on my keyboard, and you're gonna notice I can knock it over. And then this one right here is probably gonna be the coolest one, and I'm gonna have this light switch where I click it, and then I'm gonna have these three lights turn on, and also change the sign up here to white. So if you remember, it was red, so when I switch this on, it changes to a white color. So in this video, I'm going to go over how I was able to achieve all of these different interactive elements. So let's just jump into the scene and get started. And here we are inside Spline, and here are all the different elements that made up that demo. Uh, before I continue, I'm going to give credit to uh, two models in here. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Um, th this woman right here and this water bottle was imported through Sketchfab. And if you don't know how to import models into Spline, I'm going to leave a card up here. And it's going to show you how you can import 3D models into a scene like this. So I uh, will leave a link in the description below as well. So once I imported the woman, you're going to notice right here, it's uh, pretty nested. So I'm going to have to go down to about three layers down. Um, I just kept this by default, so this was a direct import. You can always go ahead and clean this up if you want. So I just clicked on this last group right here. And if you go underneath events, you're going to notice I have this one called look at. So this is a very simple uh, case where you could just use the look at and it's going to follow the cursor. I wanted to make it where it's going to follow along the plane of the floor. And then this right here is what you're going to need to change if you want it to go a lot slower. So if you do something like I'll just do 100 for an example. If I go ahead and play this, she's going to move really fast. So you can see right here, that's probably a little too quick. So if the user's moving around, I mean, if that's what you want, you could always, you know, change that number but I like to keep that at a higher number so it's more of a subtle thing and in this case I want to make sure the direction is at X because um, if you change it to something like Y you're gonna know she's gonna start to kind of lean so <laughs> it's a kind of a cool little fun effect I guess but not very realistic so let's go ahead and just make sure that that's on X and that's it and then for reset they just give you the option to hover out and this right here, you're going to want to make sure you keep this really slow as well. So at zero is good. So that's how easy it is to just have a simple model like that to slowly follow your cursor. Next, let's jump over into the yoga mat. So let me zoom in here. And on the left side, I just it's always good to uh, always name your layers the best you can. Because you need to be able to reference this stuff later in your states and your events. So it's a lot easier when everything's kind of uh, labeled. So I just have this one is a simple rectangle yoga mat, nothing complicated. Um, as you can see right here, we have a base state and then the state two is a different color. So all I did right down here underneath material, I just changed the color right here. So you can see it starts out as a red, state two is a purple, very simple. And then if you go underneath events, I just added a mouse down you're going to want to make sure this is that toggle so you can go in between the two. And then underneath actions, if you click and make sure it says yoga mat for the target, I made the base state transition into state two. Um, and then you can always change if you want it to fade in at a different um, ease in, ease out type of thing. So let me go ahead and actually change that to ease in, ease out. That might be a fun little effect. And let me change this to like 0.5. So... Let's go ahead, hit play. So if you click it, you can see it kind of goes a lot faster and it kind of almost looks like it's fading inward. So I like that effect. So I'm gonna keep that right there. Now I'm gonna jump over into the ball and show you how when you hover over it, you can have it where it goes backwards and then will come back to its state once the user you know moves his mouse away. So same thing, let me just click on the yoga ball and underneath my base state, I have it located right here next to the mat. And then if you notice, I have two different things going on. Keep an eye on the Z coordinates right here and the rotation. So if you see right here, the Z is changing. So I changed it where it moved back. And then 
the rotations at negative 90 to begin and then I'm just rotating it you know whatever you think about the amount of rotations it would take to get from there to there so um, something like that looks to be pretty good and then underneath events this is where all the magic is happening so you're just going to want to choose mouse hover and then just like the other one we're going to change the um, transition from base state to the regular state and I'm doing a two second ease in ease out so if you want it to go faster you put one if you want to go slower you put like a five or a six so let's go ahead and just see if that all if I hover over this you can see it's going to go backwards and you can do that and then what I like is it will pick it up halfway through so if the ball hasn't rolled all the way back it will still continue with its um, animation back so I think that's a really cool effect okay and the next one we're going to cover is the water bottle so as you can see right here, I have a water bottle and it's just like the woman where it's got a bunch of nested groups right here. But if I just go ahead, select the first one. And if I made sure the pivot point was at the end right here and the base state is really simple. Uh, it's just sitting right here. And then all I do is just change the rotation of the Z right here at the regular state. And then I went underneath a uh, key press. And once you click that, I just did arrow right. So you can see right here. And just like the other ones, I'm just doing a really simple transition between the base state to the regular state with an ease out. And I did that point four. Um, I thought it was a little bit slow, so let me go ahead and hit play. This is now point two, so if I hit the right arrow, it's a lot faster. So that's how you do that one. That one's very simple. Now let's move on to the light switch. So let me go ahead and zoom into the light switch. And this was just a really simple one that uh, I modeled out. So let me go ahead and select this whole group right here. And like I said, this one is gonna be the most complicated because there's a lot of different things going on. So as you can see, the switch itself is really large and kind of out of scale compared to the scene, but I wanted to make sure you can see it from like, you know, a zoomed out perspective. So let's go ahead and just kind of show you how everything is set up in this scene. So as you can see right here, I have these three uh, lights right here, uh, they're invisible. So when you turn the thing on, there's gonna be three spotlights that point up. And then if I go underneath my directional light, you can see that the regular state is at like an intensity of one. But then when I lower it, this is what happens. So I have it where you switch it off and then it's gonna go down to point three. So that's just one component of what needs to change when you click that. Then the thing that took the most amount of time is I imported this logo we created um, as just an SVG. And so I have it where it's red and then when you switch it, just these letters are gonna to turn to white. And in order to do that, I figured out that you need to go to each one of these shapes. So let me go into, I have this one called Red Fill and this just kind of covers all of the different letters right here. So what I did is I went ahead and labeled everything. So I have the A letter, this little piece in the middle is the A, then the L. You kind of get where I'm going with this. So everything has to be um, labeled here because when we start doing the events, you're gonna see a whole bunch of them over there and they need to be organized. And what I learned is I had all of these as like a global material. So I would only change it in one spot. But what I realized is I have to unlink it in order for states to be to change colors and materials you need to make sure that they're on their own thing so it's kind of like a manual process so what i mean is if i go to the a right here you can see that the base state is red and then when i zoom down here you can see the the white is under the regular the next state so i have to go to each one of these individually and do that you can't do it at like a group or like a, a global material level because it just doesn't work that way in spline, which kind of makes sense. But just so you know, I learned that the long way that you have to do it manually. Okay, so now that you have all of those different states right here, now what we can do is jump into the light and let me show you all of the different events we have going on. And if I go over into the switch group, if you keep an eye over here on the right, you're gonna see that when I click on switch, I have four different things that happen when you click on that. So let's go ahead under each one and show you what we got. So the very first one is just a regular mouse down toggle on this object. And what this object is, is cube three. So the switch is actually cube three right here. So what I needed to do is toggle that between on and off. So if you look underneath the base state, 
you can see the only thing that changed right here is the rotation. So let me change back. It's at eight, and then I just have it rotate to three point negative three point seven seven. So something like that. I kept everything else the same with the materials. So that's the very first thing is it needs to animate when I click on that. So that's what that one is is the very first one. Just transitions and point two seconds between those two states. Pretty simple. Now this next one is where I enable all of those spotlights and turn off that directional light or dim it I should say. So on mouse down I toggle and you can see right here I have a spotlight 3, spotlight 2, and spotlight. So if I go to these different spotlights right here that's what these cones are right here. So you can see I put one right here, right here where my mouse is, and then another one. So that's kind of like shooting up from the ground. And just like everything else it just has the two different states. So we have the first state you can see is uh, off actually because we want to make sure it's not on. So the intensity is at zero and then when I turn it on, I have it at like a three. And so I just did that for all of the different spotlights. And then like I showed you before, if we go underneath the directional light, we made sure that that does the opposite effect. So it starts at an intensity of one and goes down to like a 0 0.13. So if I go back into the switch group with the second one, that's all I did. So I just basically have a transition for each one of these. So that's why I always recommend make sure you label all of these things because you're not going to know what some of these are if you don't label it. So those are how you turn on the different spotlights. Now right here is where definitely labeling helps because this is kind of doing the same thing that we did down here with the mat. We're just changing the material color. So we have the base state and the regular state for each one of these letters. Um, what I recommend is you create one, make sure you like it, and then what you can do is just uh, right click, copy, and then paste it. So I just did that a whole bunch of times, and then just changed out the target. So that was uh, took me just like a minute or two. Once you get one going, you can do all of the rest of them pretty quick. Then what I did down here, it's a, a little detail, but if you zoom in right here, I just added a little simple cone right here to make it kind of look like a light you know it's not highly detailed or anything but in this example I just wanted to show the same thing so if you go underneath your light cone right here I just have it go from like a darker color to a lighter color so it looks like it's on so it's just kind of a very subtle thing so let me go ahead and hit play and show you so right now you can see they're kind of like black so when I click this they change to white so it looks like the lights kind of coming out of there so it's just like all the other ones I just changed the first state right here to a darker color and then this next state was a white and then you just kind of trigger it just like all the other ones you do a mouse down toggle and the transition right here so now if we just go back into the scene you're going to notice that when i turn that on these will change slowly those lights will come on and you can always change out this right here to go faster or slower so when you animate that on you're going to notice i have it where the lights turn on almost instantly and then that kind of switches over. So you could always change out the timing of these things really easy inside those uh, event settings. And that's it for the spline tutorial. Make sure you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.